Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. And the Phillies have won their second straight series. They win their series in St. Louis over the Cardinals. It wasn't easy. We'll break down how the last two games went, including today's day game that ended up in a one-run victory. We're also going to have a conversation because I read an interesting article from Matt Gelb in The Athletic about some issues with the offense and where they could be stemming from and an update on some bullpen help that could be coming soon. All of that on today's episode. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. I really appreciate everyone who's helped us out with that so far and anyone who's going to subscribe in the future. It's the number one way if you enjoy the content here on Locked On Phillies. It's the best way to support. So thank you so much to everybody. And uh, thank you to the Phillies for giving us something good to talk about today. They win their series in St. Louis against the Cardinals. They finish out this road trip, which included three games in Washington and three games in St. Louis, four and two on the record. The Phillies are now six and five on the year. They're above 500. So, or I'm sorry, six and six on the year. My goodness. The two days ran together because I didn't record an episode after last night's loss. My mistake. Back to 500, but they've got an opportunity to get over that in the upcoming series with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. And we'll talk about that series in tomorrow's episode, but today let's talk about how the Philadelphia Phillies got it done. And last night's game was a rough one. It was another wasted Zach Wheeler start. That's not great, but even worse, the Philadelphia Phillies were shut out in last night's contest. Uh, they lost 3 nothing. Wheeler was pretty darn good, but the offense was just non-existent. They were 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. Runners in scoring position has been something that the Phillies have struggled with at points with this lineup over the past couple of seasons, or with largely this lineup. Yeah, we're going to talk more in a little bit later in the podcast about an issue that Nick Castellanos mentioned and that the Phillies have kind of echoed that could potentially be causing problems offensively for the team. So we'll get into that, but Last night's game was just, it was a miserable game. Not very interesting, not very exciting. A shutout performance by the Cardinals, and the Phillies didn't get anything going. Today was a little bit different. The Phillies got it going early in today's game as far as the run scoring portion, and they got a little help from Victor Scott. They got a little help throughout the day from Victor Scott, center fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals. Guys fast as anything, but mm, did not really track a ball well in the outfield. And with two outs, J.J. Romito hit a ball to center. Uh, Victor Scott made an error on it. Should have been play should have been made. Credit to Kyle Schwarber, who was on first base after a leadoff walk for running it out. Scores from first on that. JT ends up on second. And then you have Alec Bohm with an RBI single right up the middle. Great swing. JT Romito scores. You're up two nothing early. And then the bats get quiet again. And the Cardinals claw back. A home run by Herrera for the Cardinals. A home run by Donovan for the Cardinals. And Aaron Nola, once he gave up that second home run, it's kind of like he looked good today, but he didn't have like his best stuff. He looked better than he did against the Braves, which basically every performance this year should be better than that first outing against the Braves. But he didn't look quite as good as he did his second time out of the year against the Nationals. And now you – was it the Nationals? Would have had to have been the Nationals. Yeah, and then you get him in this game and you say, oh, okay, mid-level Aaron Nola today, not mid like – how people use mid, like, oh, he's mid. Like, no, like right in the middle of what you'd expect kind of Aaron Nola to be. The problem with him is just the long ball bites him too much. That's something he'll have to get under control. But he battled today. There were points last year where this would have turned into an implosion start for Aaron Nola. Today, battled through it, ended up with a relatively solid stat line when everything was all said and done. Again, not his top performance, but six innings, three hits allowed. Two of those were home runs, which is unfortunate. So two earned runs, only three strikeouts and three walks. So you could tell the stuff wasn't all that there, but to get through six innings with only three hits allowed is battling. And I mean, credit to Lance Lynn as well, because he was 
really good. Five innings of one hit ball against the Phillies. But then as soon as the St. Louis Cardinals went to the pen, you got Palante in there, and Andre Palante had himself a rough day at the yard. He immediately gave up three hits, two earned runs, without recording an out, throw a walk on there, put them into trouble. That put the Phillies back up 4-2, to two, a lead that would hold for the rest of the game in spite of uh, a late run uh, given up by the Philadelphia Phillies bullpens. You, you look at it, and Gregory Soto wasn't good. Uh, they talked about it on the broadcast. I think it was Ruben Amaro who brought it up, saying that Gregory Soto – uh, when he gets on the mound and gets guys two strikes on him, he kind of looks like he's trying to strike him out rather than just pitching ahead and not hunting the strikeout and maybe getting some contact, and he's almost overthrowing at points. So that's something to keep an eye on. But Sarantia Dominguez worked a third of an inning without giving up a run. Jeff Hoffman closes the door. He allowed a hit in the ninth, but he got a double play to end it and from Jordan Walker. And it was not easy. The series was not easy at all. The road trip was not easy at all. It was just one of those gutted out, play tight games, play teams you should probably beat and find a way to win series. And the Philadelphia Phillies did that. I talked about this a little bit on air today on 97.5 The Fanatic, and I'll echo the sentiment here. Here's the thing that I take away from the road trip from an overall team perspective. We're going to talk about some individual efforts uh, in a second, but this is a team that's been there, done that. Been to the World Series before, been to the NLCS the year after that, been to the playoffs two years in a row, obviously, to get to those points. Been a 90 plus one team last year, 87 the year before, like, or sorry, 90 even last year, 87 the year before. And they just, when you play in those big moments, you learn how to win tight ball games. You get the confidence that you can win tight ball games. And the Nationals are not used to that. And the Cardinals, this iteration of the Cardinals, are not used to that. And it's just, it's a difference maker at over 162. You're going to find ways to win more than you'll lose. That's why I'll always have confidence in this team, regardless of individual struggles. Uh, big road trips or big series, rather, for Johan Rojas. So we talked about three hit game in uh, the first game of this series, a huge night for him. He also had a hit today and only one for four, but another hit. He's up to batting 161. Nick Castellanos had a two hit game yesterday in the loss. He had another hit today and an RBI, so 163, the batting average for Nick Castellanos. Both those numbers steadily climbing. Kyle Schwarber had a hit and also a walk to contribute after going 0 for 5. Um, like two nights ago, you're looking at a guy that he's he's boomer bust. He's batting 208. We know what Kyle Schwarber is, but that leadoff walk gets you two runs. That run makes a difference at the end of the day if he doesn't walk. You don't have a guy on. You don't score two. You need to score more later in the game, and you would have been tied with that late run. But instead, every run counts, and Kyle Schwarber creates run, run scoring opportunities, so that's good. Trey Turner's a little bit frustrated right now. He went 0 for 3, slammed his helmet after one of his uh, three strikeouts. Yeah, it's not a good day at the yard. He did have two walks, uh, but he's very frustrated with his ability to make contact with the baseball right now. And Nick Castellanos – seems to be a little bit there as well. But that's, I mean, that's going to happen early on in the season. They'll be able to to figure that all out. They, they absolutely will. Uh, the MVP of the series for me, uh, this might seem like a kind of understated storyline. I could say Rojas for having three hits, but, dog, I've been telling you guys, Brandon Marsh is a really good baseball player. He just is. He's a solid defender, I think above average, but even if I'm conceding that sometimes he doesn't take the best routes to the balls, he's at least an average defensive outfielder. I believe he's an above average outfielder, but that's my personal opinion. But there's no denying this dude is on a tear right now. He is like on an all-star level production through the first uh, 11 or 12 games of the season. Not a math guy. I can't add six and six apparently. Brandon Marsh is probably the best all-around player on the Philadelphia Phillies right now with the way he's playing. I understand like he's not, but with the way he's playing right now, if we were adjusting for live ability, like Brandon Marsh is having an outstanding start to the year. This guy needs to be an everyday player. He needs to hit lefties. He needs to face everybody. He needs to be your left fielder day in, day out. Guy's in great shape. Guy's a young player. Shouldn't need days off. Like, I am ecstatic with how he's starting the year. And if some of the big guys come around, start to hit more, Castellanos, Turner, um, like, you get more consistency from guys who have had moments, this team's going to really figure it out offensively. 
But you'd almost would have expected them to have a game where they have figured it out offensively by now, right? So what is going on offensively with the Philadelphia Phillies? Why are they not producing the amount of runs that you would expect them to? Well, we're going to break down this very interesting article from The Athletic today, written by Matt Gelb, that deals with the conversation with Nick Castellanos. And it might sound kind of weird, but I'll try and explain it as best as I can from being around the sport for a long, long time. So uh, we'll talk about that coming up as we continue Locked On Phillies. First off, I got to tell you about prize picks because they're America's number one fantasy sports app. They got more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Now, normally I would tell you about Phillies players that I like and the next game, but tomorrow we're looking at a little bit of rain in the forecast for Philadelphia as the Phillies return home to start their series with the Pirates, so they might not play game one. So I'm going to talk about some basketball stuff. There's a big game tonight as the Milwaukee Bucks, without Giannis, calf injury last night, go ahead and they're going to play the Orlando Magic. You know who I'd be looking at? Dame Lillard. Who steps up when Giannis goes down? Dame Lillard is that guy. So uh, look at Dame Lillard's points and then add somebody else on there. That's how I would do it. I mean, prize picks has something for every sports fan from baseball and basketball to even League of Legends and everything in between. So go ahead and check it out and we'll even cut you a deal. All right. How about that? I wouldn't be doing an ad read for him. We weren't cutting you a deal. Download the app today and use code lock on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. They help you out. You have a chance to win money. It's a win-win. Come on, prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So I read this article today in the Athletic, or in the Athletic, I guess on the Athletic. It's a website. You're all familiar with it, but it was written by Matt Gelb, a great reporter been with the team a long time and he knows what he's talking about. And he had a conversation with Nick Castellanos. Castellanos, you might've heard it mentioned a little bit on the broadcast today, but he went out and he took extensive, extensive BP yesterday before the game. He ended up having two hits uh, and that really, I don't know that the batting practice helped him. Like batting practice always helps. But the point is he's clearly working through stuff. He's not comfortable in the box. And Matt Galb asked him about the start to the season and what it is and how they're kind of figuring things out. If you'll remember, and how could you forget, last year the way the season ended against the Arizona Diamondbacks was a complete cold streak by the almost entire Philadelphia Phillies lineup, including all the star players, Harper, Real Muto, Castellano, Schwarber, Turner, all go cold in the moment you need them most. And what the Philadelphia Phillies evaluated that to be is a aggressive or rather over aggressive approach at the plate. They were swinging at a lot of stuff out of the zone. They were getting themselves out. They need to have a better approach. So naturally, what does a coach, a hitting coach, a manager do? You talk to your team. Say, hey, guys, we got to be more selective. We're going to work on being more selective. You see something that's out of the zone. You see a certain pitch you don't like. Spit on it, let it go. We're going to let that pitch go by, move on to the next one, hunt pitches that are more hittable. In theory, perfect plan, right? Don't swing at balls, swing at strikes, hit strikes. Baseball is easy. Guess what, folks? Baseball is not easy. And sometimes you have unintended side effects of things you try to work on. Now it's early. It's early on in the season. So it's not like, oh, they're screwed for the season because they tried to change this over the – no. The Philadelphia Phillies are fine. They will be fine offensively. They're going to work this out. But what Nick Castellanos attributes it to, and what players on the team attribute it to, because they converse amongst themselves, and uh, you hear this stuff from them, and reporters get a chance to talk to them about it. The trying to be less aggressive in the approach, trying to be more selective, has led to a little bit of tightening up, right? You you think so the way they teach you to hit is you have to think yes, 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 no, as the ball approaches the plate, right? You want to be thinking about attacking the baseball until you see that it's a ball because you're always prepared to swing. 
what happens when you're no, 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 yes, is you're going to get caught off guard by a lot of stuff. You want to be on the front foot, not like literally on the front foot, you want, but you want to be aggressive enough and always thinking, hey, I'm going to attack this until I'm shown by where the pitch is located that I don't have to. When you start talking about being more selective, you take guys out of their natural mindset of being aggressive. And for Nick Castellanos, who's always been a free swinger, for Bryce Harper, who's been a free swinger, uh, for guys like that that like to attack baseballs in the zone, sometimes now you're not being as aggressive with your swings in the zone. You're trying to be more selective. The swings are not as intentional uh, to balls in the zone, and you're taking away some of that power. That hurts you with runners in scoring position because you're trying to be more selective in bigger spots. It hurts you with power numbers because you're not taking as powerful of swings of balls in the zone because you're thinking too much about being selective. And that's kind of what Castellanos talked about, is that this is an unintended consequence of trying to be more selective. And Castellanos has been more selective this year. Believe it or not, by his early numbers, he has been more selective than he had been the past couple of years with the Philadelphia Phillies. But he's not being a better hitter because he's thinking too much about that. So there is a middle ground somewhere. How do you find it? Who knows? Like, I don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows. If you could find it, you'd be the greatest base. You'd be Tony Gwynn. You'd be uh, like Ken Griffey Jr. You'd be an all-time great baseball player. There are very few that can consistently find that middle ground of don't swing out of the zone, still be able to hit consistently, still be able to have a little bit of pop, some people a lot of pop, and that takes time. It takes tinkering with the approach. It takes tinkering with the mental cues that you use to get yourself ready. But if you look at this and you say, why is the Phillies offense not producing? It seems that they may have overcorrected for a small sample size. Because last year, the Phillies had a really solid regular season offense. They were tearing the cover off the ball earlier on in the postseason. Then that Diamondback series left a sour taste in their mouth. And you always amplify the way that your season ends. Realistically, though, it was only seven, and it wasn't even a full seven because they hit the cover off the ball in the first couple games. So let's call it five. It was five games of what? 162, then two against the Marlins, so 164, then what? Four against the Braves, so 168, and then seven on top of that. So 175 games, and you're taking a five-game sample size, and you're changing your approach entirely on that? That's not always great business. And – for the Phillies, they might have to reevaluate that. But baseball is a long season. They've played 12 games of 162. There's plenty more to go, 150 games to be exact, which, like, that's an insane amount still to play. There's plenty of time to them, for them to figure it out. It's just a very interesting theory as to why you haven't seen the pop from the Phillies offense so far. It has nothing to do with the weather. It has nothing to do with hitting season. And it has a lot, I believe it, to do with – the approach that they're trying to institute with some of these guys. Sometimes you just got to let guys have their flaws and understand their strengths that way. Sometimes you do have flaws that you need to try and fix. And this may have been one of those times where you should have left a lot of the stuff alone with these guys, but we'll see how it plays out. Bottom line, the Philadelphia Phillies are going to keep winning. They're going to be a good baseball team. I'm not worried about it. A four and two road trip is really good. Uh, and you started off with two losses to the Atlanta Braves. So, like, that's a really darn good team. Uh, I'm confident they're going to be where they need to be, both offensive and the pitching has been outstanding to help them out, right? So that's a, a good thing as well. Uh, I'm not worried about it, but it's just more of an explanation of why you could be seeing this downturn that we are seeing, right? So something to keep in mind next time you watch a game. Look at that. Look at the way they attack pitches in the zone and see if it feels like a violent attack on the baseball or more a, hmm, I'm trying to be more selective, so I'm just going to try and hit this because it surprised me it's in the zone. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that as the season continues. But coming up, some help for the bullpen, which you could always use more help in the bullpen, could be coming as early as this weekend. I'll give you an update on one Orion Kirkering as we wrap up today's episode. But first, let me tell you about eBay Motors because they're absolutely awesome, right? Passion, drive, and patience, kind of what we were just talking about with hitting. It's also the formula for winning championships, and it's the formula for keeping your car alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up, level it up <laughs> to peak performance. Supercharger. 
roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, all that great stuff you need, plus more. Uh, whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has all of it. They got you covered. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die automobile. You'll always find exactly what you need, what you're looking for. They're the best. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, even better part your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back isn't that a great deal because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers so a little update for Philadelphia Phillies fans on Orion Kirkering because he's been down in the minors working on a rehab start since the start of the season. He has not pitched at the major league level yet because of the sickness that he had in uh, spring training to push back his uh, ability to get ready, his preseason workouts and everything like that. So he's been pitching. He's actually looked pretty good, darn good down in the minor leagues. And he was eligible to be elevated on the ninth today it is the 10th so we could have came up yesterday but he's still finishing up some stuff so his last rehab outing touched 99 in lehigh valley on tuesday yesterday uh so you're looking at a situation where the velo is back he feels comfortable you just probably want to get him one more appearance to make sure that holds up and he feels all right after you could see him at the major league level with the big league ball club as early as this weekend. And that seems to be the plan right there. This is one of those instances where it's reporting without reporting. Everyone seems to have this weekend as a time frame and say he should be up this weekend. That normally means he will be up this weekend. Barring like a major setback or something, which is not expected, you should see a Ryan Kirkering. And what that means is now you don't have to worry about going to like Junior Marte has been fine. Jeff Hoffman got the save today after blowing one earlier in this series. Like they have talented arms, but you want to have more of those guys. And uh, Ricardo Pinto made a really good start after showing up in a car mid game, but a really good appearance after showing up in a car mid game earlier in the year. Orion Kirkring has better stuff and a higher ceiling, and it adds another weapon to the pen that you really trust that has big game experience from last year. So the Phillies bullpen will be better with Orion Kirkring than they are without Orion Kirkring, and I already think the pitching in general has been pretty darn good for the Phillies, both starter and pen-wise this year. So that'll be an added benefit. You'll get to see where he slots in. You might see guys move around in roles because – there was an idea where Ryan Kirkring was going to fit in, and you need somebody to fill those spots while he was coming back from injury, and now you have that. As far as Taiwan Walker's concerned, still a little bit further away. I mean, he just – it was uh, – his first rehab start was scheduled for tomorrow, but it was moved from Lehigh Valley to Clearwater because of rain, and they didn't want to see his rain, like, get notched uh, – rain knock the start, I should say. And they want to get him uh, – according to this reporting from, by the way, using Phillies Nation. Great work by some folks over there, Destiny Legardo. Um, they want to get him up to 100 pitches before activating him off the injured list through 46 pitches in a live batting practice session on Saturday, this past Saturday. So a ways to go still for Tywin Walker. We'll keep you updated on that. But some help coming. The Phillies win in ball games, and a series with the Pirates starts tomorrow. In tomorrow's episode, we'll preview that series we also have more weather, so we'll see if the game's actually played. There's a chance that tomorrow's game isn't played due to rain in the forecast here in Philadelphia. So we'll keep you updated on that. April showers, you know what they say. But bottom line, I feel like I've said bottom line like four times. Bottom line, the Philadelphia Phillies are winning. They won four games out of six on the road trip, and they seem to be building a little bit of momentum to put together a stretch early on in the season that could really help them be in contention later in the season. So a good end to the series with the Cardinals. Two straight series victories. Now you go for three straight. If you win series, you're going to be a darn good baseball team. That's the key to the marathon that is 162-game regular season. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please make sure, again, you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I will talk to you tomorrow to hopefully preview a game tomorrow, but even if it gets rained out, 
We'll be talking about the Pittsburgh Pirates series to come and a lot more on the Phillies in our next episode. I'll talk to you then.